guys, today we're going to be making some floats. We're going to try different sodas and ice creams. Now, you may think there's no science behind root beer floats, so why is it in the science section? Well, actually there is, and today we're going to find out what that science is. The questions we're going to be asking today are, why does the can of soda fizz? And why does it fizz even more when we put the ice cream in it? Or seem to fizz more at least. For this experiment, you're going to need some friends. You can't drink all that root beer float by yourself. You're going to need some different types of soda, at least two. You're going to need a glass or several glasses, ice cream or several different ice creams, a spoon, and a science notebook to record your observations. A quick tip to scoop the ice cream so that it's easier and so you don't bend the spoon, is to run the spoon under hot water for a few seconds. Then you can scoop the ice cream really easily, and if the spoon gets cold, you can just do it again. Well, let's get to making some root beer floats. To make a root beer float, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is pour the soda in, then scoop in the ice cream. But since we're learning the science behind it, it's gonna be a little bit longer. First, we open the can. Do you hear those bubbles and the hiss? If you put up to your ear, you can really hear them. But where are those bubbles coming from? There's no bubble machine in there. Well, actually there kind of is, because carbon dioxide is in the can, in the soda. This is a carbon dioxide molecule. One carbon and two oxygen. But where's the carbon coming from? Well, if you look on the back of this can, it says carbonated water. Carbonated water is water that's carbonated, because, <laughs> you know, the name says carbonated water. So, that's where the carbon comes from, and then the two oxygen are naturally in there. So that's the science behind why the can bubbles. Mm. Now, what's the science behind why the ice cream makes it bubble more. I'm using Danone Moose Tracks here because I love it. You can use any kind of ice cream you want. And you can experiment with different ice creams. Just gonna scoop it a little bit and plop it in. It might get kind of messy. Do you see how it fizzes a ton? Well, part of that is because the ice cream touches bubbles on the side of the, on the carbon dioxide bubbles on the side of the glass. But Another part of it is because the carbon dioxide bubbles are still releasing from the liquid. They're pushing up. And then the ice cream has a certain ingredient, fat. Fat coats the carbon dioxide bubbles so that they become foamy, like this. And I know that they get really foamy. Just wait till the end of the video. Now, it works kind of like when you blow a bubble with the bubble wand. Your carbon dioxide that comes out of your breath, because that's what we breathe out, gets trapped inside the liquid of the bubble. Then it floats away. That's what's happening here. Do you see it building up? If you put too much ice cream in though, it might overflow. So don't put too much ice cream in. Now you can try it with different types of soda, like Coke or Pepsi or Sprite, and with different types of ice creams. This bar pecan ice cream that I have here has six grams of fat in it. And this one has 19 grams of fat. So this one would obviously fizz more than this, at least I think. You can test that out when you make your floats. Goodbye. In this video, you learned how a root beer float works. You learned about how the ice cream works and how the soda works. You tried different types of soda and different types of ice cream to see which fizz most and which fizz least. Remember, at the beginning of the video when we said we would show you how much it fizzed? Well, it fizzed a lot, but then it started deflating because the bubbles were popping, like bubbles do. Well, goodbye for now, little scientist, and remember to stay curious. 